Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I do want to speak about Hansi Flick and the latest updates regarding the German coach. Later on, we're also going to be talking about Jules Kunde and this turn that he is making in his career. And then lastly, we will be talking about the central defensive midfielder Amadou Onana, which could be an option for Barcelona if they want to reinforce the central defensive midfield position. So there's plenty to discuss for today's video. I hope you guys do enjoy this one. And so let's get to it. It says here, according to Mundo Deportivo, that Pini Zavi, who is the agent of Hansi Flick, watched the Barcelona match along with Joan Laporta at the request of Hansi Flick, who continues to offer himself as a candidate to replace Xavi Hernandez. They have also stated, Hansi Flick has offered himself to Barcelona through Pini Zavi. The club and the president do like Hansi Flick, but they don't want to rush a decision on who they will appoint as the manager. So yes, currently Barcelona is looking for their next manager. They already know what Xavi Hernandez wants and what Xavi wants is for him to leave and not coach Barcelona in the next season. Maybe Xavi Hernandez Hernandez might even come back in about four or five years before the next season Xavi Hernandez does one out now as you guys already know I secretly do want Barcelona to do so well in the Champions League and La Liga this season that Xavi Hernandez just says you know what everything turned out in the best way possible and that he gets convinced that he should continue for another season that is what I secretly hope but this my friends is the reality for now Barcelona are looking for a brand new coach and for me in my opinion if Xavi Hernandez does leave Hansi Flick for me is the correct one now one of the reasons on why the agent is meeting with Joan Laporta right now is because of point number one, the financial demands. The agent wants to know what can Barcelona afford? What type of wages can they give to Hansi Flick? Because you know, Hansi Flick is not cheap. He's a very expensive manager. He demands more financials than Xavi Hernandez. And so the agent, Benizavi, wants to know what Barcelona can afford. Point number two, which is a very similar situation. Hansi Flick and the agent also want to know what type of financial pool can Barcelona have in the summer to reinforce the squad because it would no, it would make no sense for any coach to go to this Barcelona club knowing that there is no financial pool, making his job much more difficult. And to be very honest, in the way that things are looking like right now, the only, the only pool that Barcelona has have right now is pulling muscles like all we do is get injuries but on the real note i don't know what barcelona are going to do in the summer i have no idea i have no idea what john laporta has in plan to bring in more income but if they want to convince the best coaches in the world to come here and to succeed chavi hernandez their financial strength has to be much higher and yes it is important for the agent to know what what type of club they're going to be during the summer because it is in the agent's responsibility to put their clients in the best option possible and not place them in such a horrendous situation scenario where the coach or player loses credibility due to their work. So now let's move on towards the next conversation and let's talk about Jules Kunde. Now there were some interesting stats that did surface that also came from Mundo Deportivo and they have stated Kunde and Frankie de Jong are the untouchables for Xavi in 2024. They have not rested a single minute in 40 official matches played in January and in February, which makes total sense. The fact that Kunde and Frankie de Jong gets used over and over again, like who else are you going to be placing in those two positions? Like who takes Frankie's position? Frankie has been doing so amazing this year. Same thing with Jules Kunde. And let me tell you, Jules Kunde, about four months ago, many people wanted Kunde out. Many were debating whether Kunde should leave in the summer or not because of how horrendous he has been. But in the past four to five to six matches, Kunde has been world class. As a matter of fact, it says here, according to Apta Jose, that Jules Kunde is the defender who has participated in the most attacking sequences that end in a shot in La Liga this season. Joao Cancelo comes in second. So first things first. I would like to say that this is the reason why Barcelona is the best club in the world. It's because Opta is showing that Barcelona have the best fullbacks in the league. Like the fact that Barcelona have two players in the top three in terms of like attacking sequences, involvement, that is insane. And Koundé coming in first, that's also insane. It's going to be so interesting to see on where Alfonso Davis does rank in this chart, whether he could beat Koundé or Cancelo. It's going to be so much fun. But let me tell you, I do think that Koundé always had the technical ability to play in the right center back position or as a right back. He he just needed the confidence. He needed the motivation. In the past four months, Kunde was struggling with confidence. But in the past four to five matches, he has really picked up his game. And especially after Xavi Hernandez said that he is going to be leaving, Kunde felt that impact. I mean, just look at this. In terms of attempted passes per 90, he is getting better. When it comes to the pass success ratio, he is getting better. Attempted crosses per 90, 
it has stayed the same, but his cross success ratio, it has gotten better. Meaning that he is a defender that knows how to defend, he knows how to intercept, he knows how to go on 1v1 defensive duels, and he especially knows how to make those long passes that leads towards Barcelona gaining a huge attacking advantage. Kunde is showing that he is not somebody that can take the ball and dribble past two or three players, right? He's not Alfonso Davis, he is not Alejandro Balde, he is not Cancelo. But what Kunde is, is somebody who can find those long passes straight to one of our attacking players with high precision. I mean, just look at that pass that he made against Atafe that led towards Barcelona getting the first goal. That long pass to Rafinha was so sharp, so world class. And we want more of that because you can't really find right center backs that can perform like this in the world of football. Like if Kunde leaves, who are we going to replace Kunde with? Now, there has been some stories going on and some news about some other clubs eyeing Jules Kunde to take Kunde away from Barcelona. Mundo Deportivo has stated this. There were Chelsea coaches that were watching Kunde in the Naples match two or three days ago. The player is also wanted by other Premier League clubs and has a contract until 2027, but does not contemplate his departure from Barcelona in the summer as of now, meaning that Kunde does not want to listen to any offers. But the moment the transfer window does open, I don't know what's going to be his opinion by then. But let me tell you, there is no better club for Kunde but Barcelona because Barcelona uses Kunde to his best advantage, which is his technical quality. And I know that many have also said that, you know, Kunde needs to leave because Kunde does not even want to like be here and play in this position. He always prefers to play as a center back and we don't need that type of toxic energy. And yes, we have talked about that before. That was one of the stories that we were talking about in this YouTube channel about four to five months ago and on how he was telling Xavi Hernandez, I don't want to play in the right back position. I'm not happy I want to play as a center back but let me tell you if you see Kunde performing these type of numbers and playing in this way as a right center back Kunde has to be convinced eventually like how are you going to be saying I'm still bored after doing what you did against Atafe how? How are you not enjoying your football? Like the fact that we saw Inigo Martinez get injured, Marcos Alonso get injured this season, Andreas Christensen also moved away from the center back position and moved into the DM position. The fact that Kunde still couldn't get a center back spot next to Araujo, even after seeing three players out as center back options, do you not think that Xavi Hernandez just sees Kunde as like the perfect right back for Barcelona? Because we all thought that, okay, yeah, sure, Alonso's out, Inigo Martinez is out, Andreas Christensen is no longer a, a center back option. We'll, we'll for sure see Kunde as a center back again, but even, again, but even with those three players out in the center back options. Kunde still couldn't play as a center back because he is just too good as a right back. And I'm sure that whoever comes in next after Xavi Hernandez, maybe Hansi Flick, he's going to be seeing the exact same thing. And so I do hope that he continues to go through this route, which is the right back position and plays in another 10 to 11 matches this season, which could eventually convince him that that is his best position. Because even at France, he plays in the exact same position. There is just no way that he can be placed as a center back again because he has too much technical quality. He has too much attacking power. Moving on towards the last conversation and now let's talk about Amadou Onana. Amadou Onana has been a player that I haven't really been wanting to talk about because usually when I see like one story on a new player that we have never heard about, I usually give it about two or three weeks to see if like this story is actually credible or if it's just like a one-off and like, you know, these journalists were just making up another story that wasn't necessarily true, but more and more news outlets continue to report on the exact same thing. And that is about Barcelona wanting Onana to, to reinforce the central defensive midfield position. If you guys do not know who this player is, he is from Belgium. He's 22 years old and he plays in the pivot position. He has played 27 matches so far for Everton, which means that Everton do highly value the player and they, think, and they do think that he's very important. And as a pivot, as a central defensive midfielder, he has three goals and one assist. That's very impressive. He has a contract with Everton until 2027. And due to his performances and numbers, that is the reason why Barcelona want him is because they do see him as a very reliable defensive midfielder. Now, here's the thing. Everton are asking for 60 million. But my question is, okay, but what if Everton do get relegated? What if they go into the second division? Because Everton is not doing well. They're five points away from the bottom three. And usually when a team gets relegated, most of their squad members and players decrease in value. So what if Barcelona do agree on paying 60 million euros and then once Everton does get relegated, potentially, right, his value decreases to like 30 million euros or 35 million euros, then we would be like, wow, Barcelona just paid more than they should have. And so it says here, according to sport, that Barcelona want to pay 40 million euros for Everton's Onana, but the English club wants more. The 60 million euro figure that Everton is asking for is considered as an exaggerated amount by Barcelona. Arsenal and Manchester United have already shown their interest. Regarding Onana, 
Everton are not very interested in the Barcelona option considering that Barcelona are only willing to pay 40 million euros, 20 million euros less than what Everton is asking for. This is what Everton have been telling Barcelona as of now. Then they continue to say, Deco now has to look for ways to convince Everton to accept an offer for Amadou Onana. One way of achieving this is to include a player in the deal. Now, if you ask me what player should we include, I would just say Eric Garcia or hear me out. Oriol Romeo. And that's basically it. Like if Barcelona truly want Onana and they only see him as an option, then by all means, yes, get him because he's good. From a defensive standpoint, he does very well. From a numbers standpoint, goals and assists, he also does very well. And the only two players that I can think of is, let's just say Marcos Alonso, because he has been in the Premier League before, maybe Eric Garcia, maybe Oriol Romeo, or maybe even Sergi Roberto. Barcelona have the players. It's just a matter of what does Everton want? from the club and what player are they willing to accept? Now, here's the thing that kind of troubles me a little bit. Why would Barcelona go for Onana, who cost 60 million euros? according to Everton, when Barcelona can just go for Zubimendi, who is also going to be costing around 55 to 60 million euros. Why not just go for Zubimendi, who costs the exact same? And he's also from Spain, meaning that there is not going to be any language barrier next season once he does join. Onana is going to have to learn Spanish. It's going to be taking some time. But with Zubimendi, a player that knows a lot of the players in Barcelona already, why not just bring him in for the exact same price tag? If we also compare Zubimendi and Onana on this graph here, you can very well see that Zubimendi is superior in terms of forward passes, forward pass completion rate, the carrying abilities on the ball, Zubimendi is superior. Onana though is better in terms of key passes, progressive passes, duels, and defensive actions. So as you can see in this graph, there are two players that do carry different qualities and they do have different strengths. It's just a matter of what does Barcelona want from their new pivot? How can they complement Frankie de Jong in the best way possible? By the looks of it, Onana, yes, does have the better numbers and the better strengths over Zubimendi. But then there comes other questions. Is he disciplined? Is he focused in his work? Can he learn how to play in La Liga? Because right now he is showing that he can play in very open play type of matches. But at La Liga is very much different. Zubi Mendy brings the experience. He knows what it's like to play in La Liga. Can Onana also play in the double pivot position and play with Frankie de Jong? Because as a player who likes to score goals, who likes to bring assists, who likes to attack like Onana, you have to accept the fact that Frankie de Jong will be taking that role and Onana is going to have to stay back. Could he be comfortable with it? And so that is going to be wrapping up today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.